Today I will because this topic is kind of no conclusion yet. <laughs> so uh, I will share with you, and uh, I hope you will have that two things in mind to learn. Because in Buddha teaching, it's always about uh, make yourself happy. That's number one. Then you can help others to be happy. So every time when we learn some Dhamma, if, if it's about other people, you not get much benefit from that. So one thing is uh, this spiritual wisdom that I will share with you, it changed many life, thousands of years. Like uh, me also, I think, without knowing this Buddha teaching, I think I'm, I'm dead already. Because there's a time that I have high stress and commit suicide things pattern come to me also but learning this and oh no no that is dark <laughs> and then it, it saved my life and many people so that part no question you can practice and you can benefit from it and then the second part that I need your involvement uh, the first part is number one always <laughs> but the second part how this kinds of knowledge become mainstream. Even someone who have no idea am atheist. And they're confused about spiritual and religious. Hmm? You're spiritual or you're religious? And yeah, we're gonna touch on that later. How they will benefit from this nature that they have also, that part. Yeah, so clear, two part? Yeah, the first part is about how you can benefit from this, which I will share with you. And the second part, uh, if you have some thought on it, we can discuss a little bit more. So first part is personal growth. Yeah, and the second part is societal change. Yeah, this video will be a part of that already. <laughs> that when it go out, it will inspire people to think about it. So spiritual wisdom is a Buddha teaching in response to the concept of spiritual intelligence. What is spiritual intelligence? You heard this term before? Spiritual intelligence? <coughs> yeah. I think among others is fine, but people at Wall Street maybe they have no ideas. <laughs> or maybe some do who meditate and practice. Yeah, because it's not mainstream yet, maybe you don't know who said this. <laughs> the term spiritual intelligence first appeared in nineteen ninety seven, not too long. Yeah, this term just coin. Intelligent long time, but spiritual intelligent. Yeah, less than twenty five years. Yeah. For some framework that will emerge. You know, physics become quantum physics. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how many years take. But something that will be in this world forever is take time. Yeah. The other day I I saw some video about AI, artificial intelligence. It takes about 50 years. This idea come up in 1950-something. But it takes time. Until now, it's, it's effect. Business, it's effect. Government, everything. It takes some time. So this thing still new. Yeah, 1997. Uh, Miss uh, Dana Sohar, she American-British. She studied both MIT and Harvard. Yeah, not, not someone from spiritual center. She go to MIT and, and Harvard and then try to dig deeper. Yeah, in the book called Revive, Rewiring the Corporate Brain, which is uncommon in that day, spirituality in corporation. Mm. In those days, it's very uncommon. <laughs> now a bit more, right, with meditation center uh, expansion. This is interesting perspective. Dana said, unlike IQ, which computers have, and EQ, which exists in higher mammals, SQ is uniquely human and the most fundamental of the three. 
IQ, EQ, SQ. Yeah, it come from the following book from that one. Like in this book, she mentioned about it, but not expand too much. And then she have this book about SQ. Yeah, connecting with our spiritual intelligence. You might be familiar with this one. Are you quite familiar? Yeah, we learned that around the world. <laughs> in Thailand too, <laughs> we have this Maslow chart. And if you will look at it, yeah, it's, I think it's PQ first. Physical intelligence, right? Air, water. And then safety, those things in, involving IQ a lot, the money things and working. Right? And then EQ, love, belonging. And the last two, in my view, I think is SQ, self-esteem, yeah, respect, and self-actualization, morality, meaningful. Yeah. So that kind of thing that we, we learn already, but we not realize that, that how is it progressively develop. So I put this thing into this beautiful chart. Body, heart, my spirit in the middle way education and uh, the work that I'm pioneering right now with uh, Jeffrey Sachs and we start one school in Los Angeles teach 32 weeks curriculum <laughs> on this subject. Uh, touch on this thing. Yeah, we wish every kid will have healthy body, caring heart, intelligent mind and enlightened spirit that's what we aim yeah so uh, that have summarized maybe many people know this guy dr stephen akovi he wrote seven habits of highly effective people it's like a bible for businessmen <laughs> in those days yeah he said this is from him spiritual intelligence is the central and the most fundamental of all the intelligence because it becomes the sort of guidance of the others. Yeah, this is from Harvard Business School. He taught there. So not from you know religious spiritual center, it's from Kobe. So he might see something quite deep in that sense. Uh, he, he start talk about this thing since seven habit the last habit sharpen the saw yeah if you read that business book that no matter how intelligent you are you need time to step out sharpen the saw with five things yeah physical uh, emotional intellectual and spiritual he mentioned meditation already since those days but in this eight habit which is the follow up from effectiveness to greatness, he touched deep. It's not that popular when it's launched in those days. I think it's too deep. I, I read it myself and wow, it's quite deep. If it launched now, maybe more people <laughs> will take it. But when he launched this in Thailand, the Prime Minister of Thailand invite him to the uh, like a Prime Minister's house and call out the minister to come and listen, which is, yeah, not bad. When you launch your book and then the leader of the country call the cabinet member come and listen. Not bad, right? One day in the Philippines, 2016, because I, before I become a monk, um, I love reading. So I read many kinds of books. I realized this four thing. Like, Hmm, I saw this pattern before, but not from Western teacher. And then I realized, oh, very similar. We have thing in Buddhism called Satipatthana Sutta, the four foundations of mindfulness, with what cited in Pali Canon as the main tool to become enlightened. That how Siddhartha overcome body challenge, emotion challenge, intellectual challenge, then become enlightened. Mindfulness of the body, mindfulness of the feeling, mindfulness of the mind, and mindfulness of the truth, or the Dharma. It's four also. 
exact number <laughs> and if you look at it I put it in like a mm-hmm. the same perspective Gaya Pali mean the body so it exactly the body in that Western chart Vietnam is Pali term mean the feeling right so it's a heart correct mm-hmm. then Jitta which is a very confusing term now in the West um, because the mind here mean the brain right <laughs> if you go to my temple in Thailand when it oh my mind very calm today they touch that belly oh my mind very calm today <laughs> and you go, huh you touch your belly what's that the mind so in Buddhist philosophy they call the term consciousness not to overlap with the mind which means the brain I think now some new science we need some more research they call the second brain the gut feeling spot that this is a big control center this how you know when a newborn child how the, the children connect to the mother is never spot in that part I think we need more research in those things, but they call the term the second brain already. Mm-hmm. Really, very interesting. How this spot? So, uh, it's a bit tricky <laughs> on this thing. I told you that I don't have all the answer now because it's like a new emerge, overlap, and then we need to understand more. But in this sense, in this jitta, uh, it involving thinking process. Okay, to make it not confusing, jitta. So the mind, in this concept, means the brain, in this dharma, not consciousness. Yeah. Then, the last one, dharma. Yeah. In the West, you don't use the term dharma. You use Holy Spirit, or the pure awareness for something so shining, right? So this chart, and this chart, not much different in a way Kovi talk about this four but he didn't use Buddhist methodology to dig deeper he just okay this is a topic and I read many books of him he said he had that four thing from various tradition non-religious tradition also philosopher this and that but for some reason it's quite close to this one he's not here for me to ask him anymore but I think he benefit from this also. Today I will touch on actually this is the 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 complete uh, model of the middle way education. In the middle way education, we touch on this four part: healthy body, caring heart, <coughs> intelligent mind, and enlightened spirit. PQ physical quotient, EQ yeah emotional quotient, IQ intellectual quotient, and the last one SQ spiritual question or spiritual intelligence the last one is the most challenging one right now many people know that it's needed but don't know how to translate it into normal formula one plus one equal to and everyone yeah it works like that there's still many discussion on this thing we would like to explore why i'm very uh, excited to explore this because when Buddha teach, he said actually 12 things. The nature of my teaching, there are 12 things in Pali. I just pick up three. And this three term is exactly what Kovi mentioned in the Eight Habit also, that his teaching has this three nature. And wow, it just match. And he's not Buddhist. Actually, he's a Mormon guy. <laughs> he's not Buddhist at all. He's super Christian, Mormon. Yeah. Uh, three things that Buddha mentioned. Uh, I mentioned some time ago that it's quite unusual in Buddha time when he said, "Let's come sit down." And he don't ask, "Are you Buddhist?" He don't ask the religion thing. You want to learn the truth? Yeah, I can show you the way, but you must walk by yourself. Do not believe in me. 
believe in what you will experience, which is quite uncommon in those days for spiritual teacher. <laughs> Do not believe what I say. <laughs> Try and then see how it works for you. With that, it's so appealing to inquisitive mind that need reason, need explanation. Yeah. Three things. Uh, the first one is universal. Yeah, that's a term in Pali called ehipasiko. Ehipasiko, the direct translation means inviting for inspection. Come check it. So you are Buddhist, you are non-Buddhist, you are atheist, no problem. Come check it. Yeah, universal. The second one, pachatang, which means self-evidence. Yeah, direct translation is directly experience. You can experience it by yourself. Yeah, Pachatang. And the last one, uh, for me, the, the most interesting one, Akaliko. Always true regardless of time. What does this mean? It means 2000 years ago, it will work. Now, it will work. In the future, when AI comes, <laughs> it still works. Uh, I don't want to talk on this topic too much. I'm not expertise on this, but I I check on what the pioneer of AI said, and you know about that that big question, right? It come to help us, or it come to destroy us, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then someone like a Stephen Hawking and Elon Musk, not have a good, I mean, reaction to it, and then the the MC asked. Uh, the first two pioneers, they live in Canada. What do you think about this thing? It's going to make more trouble to us or it help us? He said, oh, I'm, I'm not too concerned about artificial intelligence will have trouble with us. I'm more concerned with people without ethics. You use it in the wrong purpose. That's more impending you know it's coming that <laughs> you need to to control because it's so powerful yeah i saw one thing that shocking like oh wow that now they have a program you speak some word then it imitate your voice and it speaks exactly like you you type any word into the program it speaks back to you like you speak to yourself and that person Try, he he called back to his mom, <laughs> and he speak first, and then he let that computer voice speak. His mom cannot differentiate. Oh my God. Um, you get the idea, right? Yeah, and for the good purpose, they said, oh, sometime <coughs> in the recording, in the film, in the movie, this and that, missing some word, or it take time to to fix the whole thing. So use this program to fix it, just that word. But what will happen if this get into some bad people hand, right? Maybe some of your family member can call you and then you didn't know it's not him or her. Wow, you get the idea, right? So he said, I'm, I'm more concerned with the people, not the air. <laughs> and he said something quite interesting. He said, I think finally AI will be so advanced that they can understand our value. And if the human has a good value, <laughs> it will be okay. I have no conclusion on that. It's just the thought of the pioneer of AI that we need to look more into the ethic. He talks something very non-technological. We look back to, is spiritual intelligence? I think we need spiritual intelligence more urgent than artificial intelligence. <laughs> We're doing okay, you know, with work, with this and that, but we need this before AI everywhere. Yeah, we need to equip. So I will see how Buddha teaching will work with AI <laughs> because it's timeless. This four part, great health, great relationship, great wealth, and the last one, great fulfillment. SQ will touch on the last one, great fulfillment. Yeah, you can imagine like a Bill Gates. I think his health is okay. The relationship, his family look okay. <laughs> well, 
no need to worry about him. <laughs> but fulfillment, maybe he not feel fulfilled yet. He stepped down from CEO and then try to go out. He's not perfect, but he tried to do something, yeah, for the better of humanity. Okay. So, uh, some weeks ago, I talked about emotional wisdom. If you join, giving and daring speech. Uh, this fall season, we're going to touch on spiritual wisdom. Four things. Yeah, loving kindness. Uh, compassion. Empathetic joy. And equanimity. Yeah, this is a four factor that we transform ourselves if you can, and society also. You can imagine if everyone know how to handle their own anger and use love, not hatred, how do you transform? Compassion also. Number three, very needed, empathetic joy. Someone do good, happy with them. <laughs> I think we lack this so much everywhere. Someone do good, your own business. Someone do bad, let's talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> you get the idea, right? The gossiping thing. And it doesn't benefit anyone, and sometimes it's just for entertaining the brain, or I don't know what it's called. Uh, it might get some benefit. It's not about be positive. I told you many times that Buddha teaching is not optimistic or pessimistic, it's realistic. So? Realistic. <laughs> yeah. He, he not to like a daydreaming, no. We see good side, we see bad side, and what action we're going to take that make it work. Like be realistic about it. And that's why I check the result. You listen, you do it, you check the result. Be realistic. <laughs> right? And the last one, quite deep. Equanimity. You, you heard this term before? Yeah. I think you, you heard. Many places who are new to Buddhism, they, what's that? Equanimity. <laughs> it means you stay neutral, even if it's up or down. And you feel determined in that good things. Yeah. I used to mention this, that in Thailand, they have this saying, when something good happens, you can smile but not too big. <laughs> because if it turns bad, you're going to cry too loud. <laughs> can you follow? When something good happens, you can smile, but not too big. When it turns opposite, yeah, you will cry, not too loud. <laughs> because when you overwhelmingly, emotionally happy, you like a... And when it changes, well, when it's... The more you get up high, when it go down, it hit harder. <laughs> so happy, but middle way. Yeah, that's that's the thing. So uh, in this uh, coming for five weeks, we're gonna dig deep into each concept mm. and how you can use it in your daily life. I think that's the most important thing. How this will change my days with my family member. How this will help me in the subway. <laughs> on the road. <laughs> I mentioned at CMC that Dhamma, tit, Dhamma is good thousands of years ago, it's already there. But it's not about Dhamma, it's about your class. How you can use it to make it clean and clear. Then you see the reality and you act right. You don't act in the way that you hit the walls again. And then suffering keep coming because no wisdom, no understanding. Next week, we're going to start Spiritual Wisdom 1, <laughs> Loving Kindness.